Well, there are plenty of spooky things to frighten us this Halloween, but for senior adults and everyone really, we have a treat that will keep some nightmarish situations from happening. It is tips for avoiding scary scams. We've got Bill Vickery here, the founder and president of Just Call Bill. Welcome. I'm glad you're here to share this info. Good morning, Margaret. Thanks for having me. You say the scariest scams usually start with a phone call. So you say don't answer the phone unless you know who it is, right? Absolutely. It, it starts with people saying hello. And so uh, as soon as you say hello, um, you know, many times what I tell people is make sure you put your important friends and family in their contacts because when they do call, then you know who's calling. Mm -hmm. If that number doesn't pop up on the screen, then you don't answer. Yeah, they can leave a message. They can work it out Absolutely. if it's somebody you need to talk to. That's, yes. that's safe overall. And then what about blocking calls and text messages? What do we do when there's a, a questionable contact? You say do that? Well, when in doubt, yeah, absolutely. Don't respond. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, engage, uh, block if you know how. If you don't know how, I can teach you how. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, again, if that name's going to pop up on their text message or um, email, and so part of that is just don't answer. Well, and then, so another red flag that needs to pop up on everybody's list is that scammers are recording our voices. You say using artificial intelligence, this scams you into thinking maybe that you're hearing from someone you do know. Absolutely. So someone like you that's on air all the time, they can take, or even just me in a phone call, they take uh, part of the conversation out of context, mm -hmm. put it back together, and they can recreate that voice and even their visual image. Wow. And so it's scary. So again, what I tell people is just don't answer the call. And this is not 100% guarantee, but a high likelihood that it won't happen. Yeah, that's a great thing to keep in mind. Another spooky one, a lot of times you get the email or text message alerting you to some kind of an issue. Maybe it's UPS claiming you have an undeliverable package, heaven forbid, um, and then there's a link you can you can learn more by clicking that link. Don't Never. click on anything. It, it's, again, once you click, it's going to take you to a website, mm -hmm. and that's the place where the scam can start. You know, And so they're going to ask for your... Uh, information. It could be a credit card, your personal identification, and then that's where horrible, scary things happen. Yeah. And generally, I mean, I guess you could just back in and say anything that's unsolicited. Um, but, but let's jump into this one. A con artist will often seek personal information, like a username, password, account info. Um, you never give that. A, and again, if somebody's reaching out to you, that's that's already fishy. A absolutely. It could be someone posing to be your bank or mm -hmm. some other institution, and they're saying, well, we're just calling to confirm. Oh, great. No, no, no. You just don't give that information out because, uh, like you said, if, if that really is your bank, then uh, there's other questions. Or if you're in doubt, go to the bank or call your credit card the number on the back of the card. And then you, you also say, this is an easy mistake to make um, when you're at the gas pump or the restaurant. To avoid being a victim, do not use your debit card, you say. What's the difference? Well, I'd say because your debit card is correct, uh, uh, directly linked to your bank account, checking or savings. So there could be someone, there's a skimmer that they could put into the bank card reader. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody sitting in the parking lot that's gathering that card information, just captured your four-digit pin as you put it in. And by the time you get home, all the money in your bank is gone. And then finally, there's one important message. I, I know you find yourself telling this to a lot of people that you work with. Keep in mind that the people on Facebook are not really your friends, right? A a absolutely. Facebook created a really interesting marketing name, Friends. Um, and what I see with a lot of senior adults is they're going to Facebook so they can see what their kids and grandkids are doing. Mm -hmm. But they also don't realize their face is on Facebook around the world and is a high likelihood to be scammed. Well, you, you know... You've been doing this business for some years. Your company offers technology and education services for older adults and families, for, for senior adults and families. You know, there's a great need for this. You talk about uh, a senior who just got a brand new phone, you know, especially in January, you see that rolling. Family's not always gonna provide the technical support, and sometimes that's a little bit much, right? What yeah, happens? Abs absolutely, so many times, you know, the kids are thinking they're doing something good, saying, hey mom, we bought yeah. you this new phone, but we don't have time to teach you. And so that's where I come in. I can teach them. My motto is to help them use their technology more confidently, effectively, and safely. Yeah. 
uh, because there's bad things that can happen if they don't learn how to use it safely. Yeah, and, and it's nice for, for somebody to be able to seek uh, your expertise instead of feeling like they're calling their, their grandchild all the time. Or Absolutely, and most likely a 10-year-old is not doesn't know how to teach <laughs> grandma, yeah. and so what I do, I've learned how they learn, mm -hmm. and so whether that's in a group setting or a class or one-on-one -on -one at the kitchen table. All right, anything else you want people to know just about the services you provide and what it is uh, you do when you work with people? So I work with phones, tablets, computers, mm -hmm. uh, teaching people how to use them, but then we also provide in-home technology setup. So when they move into a new house, yeah. uh, we can set up the things uh, to the internet, you know, yeah. the TV, the cable, the printer, um, computer, and all that stuff. And then uh, we can be their IT support if there's ever a problem at the house. I love that. I mean, these can be heated situations, and it's nice Absolutely. to know that somebody can just walk them through that. Um, Bill, we appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here. Good tips. Uh, you teach people it's never too late to learn. People can call you at the number on screen, or they can find you online. Just call Bill. We've got a link on accesscarolina.com.